The Milky Way is one of the most awe-inspiring sights you'll ever photograph, but it can also be tricky to post-process the raw images into something that truly captures the experience. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to use raw processing and luminosity masks to create gorgeous night skies. First thing I want to do in Lightroom is just right-click and I'm going to go choose Create a Virtual Copy simply so I can refer back to the original at the end here. Now the key thing we need to address in the raw is going to be this white balance, which is hideous. So let's bring our temperature down to something like around 4200 is much more of a night sky color balance. And you can see there's a heavy green glow. There's a bit of air glow. And I'm going to push up the magentas considerably here to around plus 40. And I'm also going to go down to the tint in the shadows area down in camera calibration. And let's push that up to about 40 as well. And then lastly, bring in a little bit more color with the blue saturation slider to around plus 25. If you're not familiar with the camera calibration tab, be sure to check out the video I've got linked below. It's one of the best tools in Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw for color. Now that we've got a much better looking color, let's bring out a little bit more of the foreground shadow detail. I'm going to go to the blacks and let's just bring that up to about plus 20. Not too much, just a little bit here. And then we can start working on these stars by bringing up the whites to about plus, say, 30. And then I'm actually going to go down to the clarity and dehaze here. If we bring up the clarity just a little bit, like 10 points, not much at all, and the dehaze just a little bit, that can just help separate things a bit. What I'm ultimately envisioning here is this Milky Way really standing out against its background. And what we've done so far is to separate the color and a little bit of global adjustment. The next steps for this image are going to have to happen over in Photoshop, where we selectively brighten these stars without the other parts of the image getting brighter or take the darker parts and push them down as well. So I think this is all looking great. I would normally go to the detail tab and work on noise reduction and sharpening, but since I cover that in other videos, I'll just link to those below. And let's go ahead and select all the images, right click and choose to edit in Photoshop as smart objects. I've now got my original raw for comparison and my adjusted raw over in Photoshop. So I'm gonna command C to copy this layer, switch back, hit command V to paste it. So I have both versions together and I'll just hide the original and I can close this unnecessary extra document now that it's redundant. So our raw is looking pretty good, but I want to make the bright parts brighter and the dark parts around it darker so that the Milky Way will stand out better. And in order to make things brighter, we'll go click for a brightness contrast adjustment layer, double click to adjust it, and let's bring up the brightness for the brighter stars and the contrast as well. And globally, this adjustment doesn't make a whole lot of sense yet. What we want to do is just selectively reveal it in the gas clouds and the other bright parts of the Milky Way without affecting the surrounding sky and all that. So we need a layer mask to target things and then we'll paint it back in. So let's alt click on mask for a black mask because black conceals. And so now this is hidden and we can paint white to reveal things, but I want to paint with precision over the lighter parts of the Milky Way. So I'm going to go reach for a lights luminosity mask. When I click on L, I get a preview of things which are lighter in the image. And that's exactly what I need. Now, if I wanted to refine things with the slider, the levels, or the color, I could. And that might be helpful if you have, for example, like the glow of a distant city or something. You need to negate that. But I think this preview is already great. So I'm going to load it as is by clicking cell to convert the preview into an active selection. And you see the cell button's lit green, letting us know we have a selection. I'm going to be for my paintbrush. Make the brush a little bit bigger. Make sure I've got high opacity, low flow. My mask is selected and I'm just going to start brushing with white onto it. So what I'm doing is starting to reveal that brightness contrast layer that we had. And I'm going in pretty small increments. So at first, this won't look like I'm doing much, but in a moment, I'll show the before and after. And we'll see we're starting to build up already a pretty significant change to this image by brushing repeatedly in these areas that should get a little bit brighter in the stars here. Not every part of this needs the same adjustment. Like this core here is already so bright on the one side. I wouldn't want to brush too heavily there, or I might start to blow it out, or it might look a little uneven. So I'm more focused on other parts of the Milky Way there. And then with that, let's see how much we've done so far from before to after. We've got this nice brightening of the Milky Way. I'm just going to give it a little bit more of an adjustment to a few key areas here. And then let's just see how that looks there in just a second. Get that right there. Okay, so from before to after. So we've got our adjustment coming through this layer mask. If we alt click on the layer mask, you can see that that's what I brushed in. You can see that I'm adding the stars, I'm adding the gas clouds. 
It's got a lot more precision than just painting freehand on these areas. So that's looking really good. I'm gonna go ahead and deselect by hitting Command D. I'm done with that. And now I wanna darken the dark parts of the sky. So I basically need to do the same thing in the opposite way. So I'm gonna go and click on a brightness contrast layer, double click it, and let's make it darker. Something like minus 30 seems about right. I need to all again, alt click on mask to give it a black mask to conceal it. And now I just need to reveal it in the darker parts of the sky. So for the dark areas, I want a dark selection to control my painting. So I'm gonna hit D. And in this case, I don't think the default is good enough yet. These areas which are pretty light in the lighter parts of the Milky Way, these would be adjustable. I could start darkening the areas that I just lit up more, which is not what I wanna do. I wanna protect them by making them look more black in the preview. So if we slide down to something like Darks 3, that's a little bit better. Darks 4-ish. I think Darks 4 is better. You see this is protecting these brightest areas of the gas clouds and the stars in the sky. So they won't get darkened because I won't be painting those areas on this layer mask. So I click on Cell to load that as my active selection. Hitting B for my brush again, still painting with white onto this layer mask because white is going to reveal the adjustment and the adjustment is what's going to darken things. And I'm gonna shrink down my brush and start painting in these little negative areas between the brightest gaseous clouds to start darkening up the center of the Milky Way here. And I'll come back in a moment for the outsides, but right now I just wanna go down the middle to kind of darken that up a bit and really hit that pretty good. It's gonna add some nice contrast to those areas and you can see already how that's kind of creating some separation. And now I'm gonna to switch to a much bigger brush and just come back on the outside areas and brush in those to kind of darken the outside, do the same thing down below. And of course I'm painting over the foreground by doing this. When I created my darks preview, that entire foreground is dark and I don't really want to be painting those areas. So I'm potentially creating some issues for my foreground with what I'm doing. I'm going to fix that in a second, but let's just take a look and see from before to after. And I think that's looking pretty good. I want to tighten things up a little bit on this side of things here. Just Darken that down, get even more focused on the gas clouds. And I think that's looking really pretty nice. Now, like I said, we, we can spill over into these lower areas. If I alt click on this, you can see that I'm you know avoiding the bright parts, but I'm not avoiding things like this mountain. And I might wanna check and make sure that's okay. If I alt click, just kinda of hit these areas a little bit more, make sure that's a little more even. But these mountainous areas here, I don't wanna be brushing them in. So I need a selection and I need to paint out these areas. And I could go and paint black over the mountain here, or I can just hide the whole thing by putting a group mask over this. And I think that'll be the easiest thing to do. So I'm gonna hit Command D to deselect. And now I want a selection of the sky, so I can just go to the sky button in the basics panel and just choose to select the sky, sampling all layers. And so now we've got a sky selection. And what I wanna do is turn this into a group mask on, well, both of these layers really. So I'm gonna shift click to select both, and then I'll go click group. And I don't wanna feather it at all. I'm gonna say do not feather, okay. So what I have here is a selection of the sky, meaning that only these areas in the sky can be adjusted for anything inside the group. So these layers now only affect the sky. And so that's a much better adjustment. And then lastly, I'm thinking these areas of the air glow you might prefer that, that is the natural color of the sky on some nights, we get that green color, but to me, I'd like to tone it down a bit. So I'm gonna go grab a selective color adjustment layer, open it up, and while I keep calling it green, I think Photoshop's gonna call that cyan. And what I wanna do is remove green. So I'm gonna add magenta, something around plus 50, and I'm gonna make it a little more blue, which means I need to subtract yellow. I've got a video on the selective color tool that'll link below as well if you're not familiar with how this works. But just take a look at what that does to help soften it up. It's pretty subtle. You may not see it all that clearly on YouTube, but on my end of things, I think that's very helpful for this area. And just to ice a little bit better, I'm going to alt click for a mask and paint here. I can just go freehand with a large brush. No need to separate out brighter or darker areas because the selective color itself is already targeting things which are green. But I'm going to just kind of focus on that part of the image. And let's just take a look at what we've done here. So we've got the original, if I alt click to show, here's where we started with our raw and things are looking pretty rough. The color balance is obviously awful. 
and the Milky Way doesn't separate that well from its surroundings. Then in Ra, we did a good job of globally adjusting it, but the Milky Way wasn't popping yet. And then with this series of adjustments here using the luminosity masks, we got to this finished result here where the sky is looking much more impressive and an overall adjustment from here to here. And now click on these videos to learn more about processing the night sky with Photoshop and Lumenzia.